you so much, guys, for taking uh, the time to come here. Um, <clears throat> this is um, a tiring show for us and for you guys. Uh, so I, uh, my colleague Bill Bork here uh, is from Sony. Uh, we did a little tag team, but um, we both promised to keep this at, uh, let's say, 30 minutes. Um, if we need more time than that, then it's uh, too long. So we'll get you out of here uh, soon. <clears throat> so when I looked at uh, Paperless Office, um, I have been coming to this show for about 26 years. Uh, been in the legal market about that long. Uh, I look at uh, where we have come over the years and what we have went for. We, we want the paperless office to try to gain efficiencies, cost savings. Um, nowadays, uh, unlike 26 years ago, for remote access, so we can access things on the fly. Helps when that stands up. <clears throat> so, years ago, um, law firm in Phoenix, uh, we thought we were going to be innovative. This was probably 20 years ago. Fax servers was a big thing. And um, we went to convert them to digital fax servers. So we were so proud. We had all of our servers there, and we would just route them to the desktop, and there they had them at the desktop. And uh, it was a great idea. Yeah, it's about a 400 user firm, so it's pretty sizable. You know, 50, 100,000 pages a month. Uh, what we found out is that every attorney that had got those uh, wanted to print them out, which the printers didn't have enough RAM and um, blowback cards to print them out. So we found ourselves for the first year or so um, actually um, printing, routing, printing the faxes in the fax center and hand delivering that to each attorney simultaneously. Now I believe after um, uh, a couple of years they were getting into that. They bought some nice uh, blowback cards for the printers and were enabled. So we're trying to go paperless. We have for years. Um, and certain technologies will help enable that. <clears throat> when I look at the devices, um, we've had wonderful on-ramps uh, to digital paper over the last um, years, and, and more and more are coming out, and the prices are coming down. Um, I uh, love to tell a story about my sc scan snap. I almost can't live without it. And we, we have MFP scanners in our office and different ways to get things in. And we, of course, a lot of things are digital because we own our own document management system. World Docs, but uh, I love my little scan snap, and in anything in a minute's notice, I can get scanned into my system. So we have a lot of different hardware devices for that. <clears throat> we have different software devices. So you all know eCopy and OnTool, QuickTag, and these are major players in the market that have made productivity workflow tools uh, to allow these uh, multifunction devices, scanners, uh, to accurately route uh, and direct these uh, this paper. Uh, into a digital systems uh, such as World Docs, I manage, and, and others. Um, so we have these tools in front of us here. But our paper output continues. And it's uh, some of my friends that uh, well, used to be Pitney Bowes and some of the outsourcing companies, uh, they still make a very healthy living today uh, from all the output um, from uh, printers and scanners and different things like that. Uh, when I look at my office, I was preparing for this, and I thought, gee, well, you know, why is this? Uh, one of the things I've noticed that um, I have uh, many more times printers than scanners in my office. We, we have uh, really good relationships with Canon and we kind of sometimes get free devices uh, to test with our software. So we have all these scanners around, but man, we still, a uh, manager still insists that they have a printer behind their desk and something so they can output. And um, that, uh, I think this is typical within the law firm. You'll have printers and MFPs all over the place, and you have easy access to scanners, but certainly not more scanners than printers. Um, <clears throat> mobile platforms have helped with paperless. Uh, as we have the tools to scan, we have uh, the uh, software to help route, we have mobile devices, which now you can take these documents and you necessarily don't have to print them out. They can go to your laptop, they can go to your iPad, and now you can get by with, with viewing some of these more remotely than, say, 10 or 20 years ago. So that's helped with our quest a little bit. When I started looking at this device, which Bill will give you more of a rundown on what it is and more details, digital paper device, I looked at my own workflow. And I, I just said, why, why do I still want to print that paper? Why are we still printing them? I think a lot of it has to do with the size. Um, 
when I look at these different things on a laptop, I have a contract review, multi-page. I want to see that final contract in the size where it's at. I don't really want to view it in my notebook that cuts half of the contract off. I want to see that whole page in its entirety. I think the feel of paper, the ability to simply take my pen and mark and write up on it um, uh, is very important for me to do. Um, so some of us uh, like to prefer to do it in the computer. I'll have certain things that I'll edit or revise in the computer, but many times I'm marking it up for my marketing staff or perhaps for my counsel to review uh, my markups. So we, we, still, we still have that paper and we, we like, like what we like. We like that feel and that size. So when, when I got this here, um, I was pretty amazed um, at how similar it is to paper. Now, I, I too will say at these ILTA shows, um, I, I look around for exciting technology, things that maybe wow me. For the Legal Tech New York, ABA Tech Show, I go to these shows and I try to look for something different. And I think you will see here by the end of our presentation that this is a very unique device. Uh, Sony has done a great job in making this feel like you're writing on paper. Um, when documents are sent to it, it looks like a document like you print off the printer. It's also important to note it's a new category device. Uh, so sometimes, and this is very new, so our top track also is very new. Um, we will approach people and they'll say, great, uh, love it, I get it, we have that category. I take a lot of notes, I review a lot of stuff I print out, uh, I, I get this. I have the other side that will say, I got my iPad, why do I need it? I have a notebook, notebook and an iPad like, like I carry around with me. Um, and I'll look on the table when we're, and they'll be taking notes on a piece of paper, even though they have these devices there. Have them open up their briefcase, and guess what? There's going to be paper printed out in there um, for those different things. So this is, this is a device that complements these other devices. And it is something that's an accessory to these. It replaces your notepad. It replaces the, the contracts, the things, the interim things you would normally print out to review, to take home with you, etc. So I started looking at the way I use this, um, and I started consciously looking at when my finger goes up to the print button. And so we can look at this as another device, but maybe maybe we're looking at it the wrong way. I started looking at what stuff do I print, and I'm trying to trying to teach people how to use these devices and tell them about it. So I certainly have to get my actions correct. So. As I go to hit print, I examine what I'm actually printing and why do I want that paper there instead of leaving it on my computer. Um, so a few things, and we're still gathering case studies, uh, which will be exciting to hear as we have more months into this product. Um, things that I printed, and this is a simplistic uh, maybe view of this, but hotel and travel arrangements, so call me old school. I, I have them in my email buried somewhere. Um, I have them in my TripIt program, it's a great little program to throw your reservations in. But I just, I go to a foreign country or wherever, I want those printed out in my folder where when I'm on the road getting in a taxi, I have it in front of me immediately and I have to pull my notebook up. So I find myself doing that, that's a, maybe a simple view. Um, I find myself um, with agenda meeting, meeting notes, um, working a deal with a Canon um, a copier company a while back and they sent me a list of bullet items and some attachments to review in an upcoming meeting. So uh, normally, I st we meet, take it in the conference room. I wouldn't uh, bring my laptop in there probably. I would just hit print on that agenda and those items and I would grab it off my printer. It's kind of free, right? I don't really see the click charge on that. And I'd bring it to my conference room as well as my staff would have their printouts with them and we're sitting there going through the agenda items marking up. Uh, now, um, I print that to my digital paper, and it's a transient item, so I don't need it forever. I got it in my email for a record, which goes into World Doc, so I have that record. But it's something to keep me on track so I can take notes, so I can write while I'm in that meeting and keep organized. Um, I was in a Heathrow um, a while back, um, getting some business over in um, the London market. And uh, we had a cloud contract that needed um, my signature, counter signature on it before the, the firm would move forward. Uh, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to find a printer and a scanner to sign it and, and do that stuff. Um, well, I had my uh, staff drop uh, that contract into a shared folder that uses like a box or a web dev type shared folder. They drug it into our shared directory a few minutes later 
it appears in my device and I sign it and they waited for it and grabbed it and sent it to the client. So that's another example of um, how the convenience use. I don't do a lot of these, but I can imagine attorneys doing a lot. We've heard stories from some of our early adopters where um, performers, they would normally print out for the attorneys to review. I, instead of printing these out, uh, their thoughts are to buy these and put them on, print them to digital paper, hand them to attorneys, allow them to swipe through, review, and delete them, wait for the next week or month to perform that. Um, depositions, uh, attorney um, um, comments for depositions, putting the case files on here, swiping through the documents, and also having a notepad to take notes on has been real helpful. So I guess it's uh, like any new device. Um, you have to change the way you think and you have to change your perception of what this is. This is not a device like an iPad. It is a new category of device. Um, it was uh, much like this. I had a cost recovery company years ago um, and uh, I had a vision to create this embedded technology. And you walk up and, and there's a echo track, copy track terminal and and at three thousand dollars and it's hanging off the device and I wanted this technology inside the copier. Um, and our first rule, uh, law firm that we rolled out, uh, I was there, I was very excited about how they received this technology and people were confused <laughs> because their terminal was gone. How, how do I enter my user code and client code? I have no terminal anymore. So we had to train them that, that you know, no, don't look for the terminal, it's now inside the copier. Uh, so new ways of doing things, much like this. It's a, it's a different way of work and you have to think about it different. So I, I've been, been looking at this as um, a digital printer. I think that's more appropriate. It's the world's smallest and lightest digital printer. You have stuff that you need that you normally print out. You print to this, you sign it, you mark it up, you redact it, you put a post-it note on it. You have notes you take on that. You go into your document management system, etc. So <clears throat> with that, I will give it to Bill. But we do have some great feedback from our customers, um, some law firms that have been using it. Um, we have, um, we are in the hundreds of sold in the last first couple months out of the gate, not the thousands yet. Um, so we have a lot of folks um, that I can call and I've been getting quotes from uh, that use the device. So folks, when they get it, they're paper intensive um, and start using it, they learn to love it. So. Without further ado, I'll let uh, Bill Bork, um, the National Director for Sony for the United States, uh, kind of take it from here. All right, thanks so much, Ray. You can clap, it's okay if you like to clap. No, 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 no. <laughs> <Ooh, huh? laughs> well, as Ray said, I'm Bill Burke. I'm the National Sales Manager for, for Sony with this new digital paper device. And um, I learned so many things from this man here. He's a great partner but I was carefully taking notes on my digital paper to make sure I got them all down for my next consideration of how I want to position digital paper. Um, but Ray has been on this quest and he shared this vision with me a while back. And I know everyone in this room is fully cognizant of this in regards to the industry, but this quest for paperless, a, a paperless office is really intriguing for me because I've never heard it spoken about so much as I have in the legal uh, industry, the legal channel. Um, but Ray has also pointed out to me that this device, it completes the circle. It's sort of that last piece of the puzzle, the last piece of, of, that you're trying to archive, which is that handwritten note. Um, so we think this is a really key part of that, and it gets closer to that paperless uh, sort of um, goal. And then also the device, um, as Ray shared with you, and I'm gonna share with you a little bit more too, it enhances workflow efficiencies, and you'll see why in a few moments, but basically time compression, being able to do more things in a shorter period of time because of this device, working with all of the other solutions that you already have. So um, Ray, again, he's a visionary, and I like the way he talks about things, and he talks about changing the way you think, and he's certainly given me um, plenty of opportunities to change the way that I think. So uh, Ray, thank you so much for your partnership in regards to, to this and all that you've done for us to, uh, to help penetrate this channel. Um, this is a brand new channel for Sony, something that we have not really been involved in before. Actually, maybe only on the uh, being sued side. <laughs> so that's the only, <laughs> only time we ever hear about lawyers and the legal channel. Um, so so I'll, I'll just go into something that I think really expresses the digital paper device in a, in a very profound way. And it's a video that Ray and I actually um, created together. Um, and we think it speaks to it quite well. So if, you'll, if you don't mind, and, uh, just t take a look at this video. In 
document-intensive professions such as law, the ability to work paperlessly is a long-held desire. Scanning is not always a practical alternative, and printing remains the logical fallback for reviewing and marking up documents required in the legal size format. Sony's new digital paper is the next step toward paperless by reducing the need to print, store, share, and copy. An easy-to-read touch panel 13.3-inch display shows full-screen views of letter-sized forms and documents. This eliminates the need to zoom or scroll when reading a page. Sharp, easy-to-read text and graphics are nearly identical to printed documents. Writing, highlighting, and erasing text is familiar and comfortable. Instead of printing contracts or agreements to edit, users simply make their edits directly on digital paper and then share them with colleagues. For example, in the legal market, using the WorldDocs document management solution, just select documents and then choose check out to digital paper. Once you wirelessly sync to digital paper, you can review and annotate documents just as you would on paper. When you're done with annotations, just check back in from the World Docs interface. If you're only reviewing and not editing, then tag your documents and press the Send to Sony DP button. Digital paper can also replace trusted legal pads and daily journals used for client meeting notes while maintaining the comfortable familiar feel of pen on paper. And your handwritten notes can be synced back to your computer and saved into a World Docs Matter folder. Now, with your client notes as part of your Matter folder, you've achieved the next step in client-centric information. Sony's Digital Paper. Rewriting the way you do business. So that is, that is our digital paper um, video, and that's available on, on the World Docs website. Uh, there's a digital paper landing page. So if you want to show other uh, team members and whatnot about digital paper, it really, we think, sums it up quite well. All right, so. Okay, so um, basically, what is digital paper? And that's really what we're, you guys are here to find out about. The way we, we kind of summarize it in a, a few short words is, is qu it's quite simply, it's a better way to read and write. And we're going to show, share with you why in a moment. But basically, it's a way of optimizing the reading of, um, and taking of notes. Uh, and that paper replacement concept is really embraced by this product. It, it's, Ray talked about it being a familiar, paper is very familiar to us. The size of this is very familiar. It's a full eight and a half by 11. Um, it reads like paper. There's no glare, so that's really a nice uh, benefit to this product. Um, and one who is doing a lot of immersive reading, you will want to be able to read a lot of documents and whatnot. That's why a lot of people print documents, because they want to read um, more carefully and more thoroughly. Um, you can, it's always on, so basically I never turn this device off. Um, and you'll see why I'm moving about the battery life. Uh, and then you can annotate and highlight in regards to, to this device as well. So that's one of the key functions of, of lawyers and, and legal folks. And then it eliminates your yellow pad. You can take notes on it. Um, and it's got a long battery life. This device will last for about three weeks if you're not using the Wi-Fi. Um, and it's about two plus weeks with, with the Wi-Fi <coughs> being used. Um, and it's thin and lightweight. Um, it's also durable and unbreakable. So really, I mean, I like to demonstrate this device, but you would never do that with an iPad or, or a notebook. Um, and then also, it's ultra bright in regards to how it looks. You can actually see, see this quite well outside. Um, you can't read uh, any kind of a <coughs> backlit glass device such as a, as a, a tablet or a a PC, uh, and this device you can read just like paper. And it's ultra bright, um, it's got, uh, got built-in Wi-Fi, it has a, it's a micro SD card compatible, so it comes with four gigabytes of memory, which is the equivalent of 17 bankers boxes worth of documents, but you can actually add up to um, a 32 gig, uh, 32 gig uh, micro SD card, which quite frankly is a, is a lot of uh, storage. So how does it compare with other devices? And this is the key to this. Um, the things that this device does do extremely well, other devices just can't compare. Uh, so that letter size display that we shared with you, you don't have that, that experience with a tablet or a notebook. Um, it reads like paper. Again, you don't have that with a tablet or a notebook. Uh, it's always on. 
Uh, it's readable in sunlight, and again, it, if we could get outside of this biosphere, I could share, show you how it works in sunlight, but it's, it's really remarkable outdoors. Um, it's light and thin, and et cetera. You know, the tablet is, is partially there. Um, again, you just saw how, how unbreakable it is, and the battery life is, is maximized. So these are, this device has real serious differences if you compare and contrast it with those other devices. Um, it's a paper replacement, so I share with you why it's like paper, but really it's better than paper, and that's the key thing here. Um, being able to stay organized and actually, you know, taking your document folders or notebook folders and creating workspaces which are basically like matter folders for a, a, an attorney. Um, quickly being able to find um, sort of things using document search or word search, uh, those things you can't do with paper either. So these are things that make it better than paper. And then in regards to the, uh, the read, write, and share ecosystem, so the digital paper was not designed to, um, to actually replace anything at all. It just does some things that these other devices can't do very, very well. So it's actually, in working con in conjunction with the other devices, it's just a really more useful tool. Um, so the smartphone, we need our phones. We have to have them. Um, the PC, of course, is vitally important for searching for things, et cetera. The tablet, we know you love your iPad. Um, but the digital paper does things that none of these devices will do extremely well. And it, again, working in concert with those devices through the World Docs um, solution, you have something that's really going to make you that much more, uh, more uh, efficient and a better, a better professional in what you're trying to do. So I like to talk about things in terms of specialty tools for specialty applications. And this is certainly a specialty tool for a professional who wants to really, um, for, you know, to maximize their efficiencies. So in terms of Sony's um, global expectation for this device, I just wanted to share with you some of the markets, the other markets that we're looking at as well. Um, the academia market, professors love this. So they're constantly doing peer-to-peer -peer reviews and all that kind of thing. Uh, they're constantly annotating journals and sharing back and forth. And this is the key thing that uh, academia has really um, sort of resonated around the device. They love the readability. They love the ability to annotate, et cetera. The government, you know, this is another uh, part of this that's really important. The government is constantly trying to uh, eliminate paper as well. This is a, a big, huge push for the government. Uh, so this is another device that um, addresses that. And then entertainment. And we have a little uh, little company called uh, Sony Pictures. You may have heard of it. Um, and they, we have shared this with a lot of script readers and writers. And this is something they love because so many of them constantly complain about these big wads of scripts that they'll have to read over the weekends and annotate and make all these changes and then submit it to somebody else who has to load it somewhere and then share it with other team members. I'm telling you, Hollywood is going crazy over this, over this device and we're really excited about that as well. Uh, Enterprise, so basically form uh, filling and, and all that. We're trying to work with solutions for, for people who see this as, as a, you, you can imagine a polling company, for example, uh, Reuters or um, Rasmussen, um, actually ca capturing polling from people in the, in the malls or wherever they are. One of the things that polling companies keep on complaining about now is nobody's at home or people don't use landlines anymore. So they're having a hard time getting uh, more information. And you can see that reliability of polling right now is pretty bad compared to the history because we're all changing the way we do things in our, in our lives. <coughs> and then of course legal, that's why we're here. Um, and I've shared with you what we're doing in, in regards to the legal community. So um, digital paper and, and world docs, and, and this is re reinventing paper workflow. Um, basically the value proposition is using this in conjunction with world docs, uh, the document management system. It's just going to improve your efficiency so much more. You're going to be able to do that annotating and all those different things you, you want, um, the handwritten notes. And then using the document management system, your, your matter folders will be more robust. They'll have more in, you know, intellectual property from the attorneys who are, who are compiling that information for you. Um, and then also being able to complete the, the, the story, complete that circle, um, you know, just, just really making it more, more thorough information in regards to the, um, to the matter. Um, one of the things I want to share with you is a scenario, and I like to build scenarios because it kind of puts, what I, what I do is I listen to people in, in the industry, and then I try to see if, um, if something resonates with them that, that they actually experience a lot. And it has to do with time card entry. So every managing partner, everybody who's involved in the financial side of the law firm, it, this is something that keeps them up at night. The revenue, um, the, the revenue that's produced at a law firm is through billable hours, right? And so when, when we, we talk about lawyers, lawyers are good at being lawyers, but they're maybe not so good at being administrators, and that's a hard thing for them to do. And most of the lawyers I've spoken with t tell me that the single uh, part of their job they hate the, the most 
has to be time card entry. So imagine this scenario here um, when you when you consider those uh, things I just shared with you. Uh, but an attorney is making a call, which is you know quite common, and the first thing they're doing is grabbing, <coughs> excuse me, grabbing their legal pad. But imagine now grabbing the new legal pad, the digital paper, and he's taking uh, his his notes on the digital paper and compiling them, and and basically this entire phone call represents a billable time frame for the uh, for the firm. Um, so once he finishes that that um, that phone call, he si simply hits send on this document, and it goes right to that file cloud folder that Ray showed you and that video showed you as well. And now there is actually a record of that phone call. Okay, so that's a particular um, uh, piece of uh, information so to remind the attorney that the phone call happened, or maybe the admin will be reminded as well. So when it comes to that time card entry, um, so basically now that intellectual property that was gathered during that phone call can also be shared with um, collaborating team members who might be on the matter as well. Um, but the key part here, I believe, is a reminder of the call for the, uh, for the time entry. And I think this is a key piece where um, that attorney who might have used the old way, the old legal pad, and put it in his trunk or the back of his car or, or somewhere in his office, and every lawyer will tell you, you know, I've got a thousand legal pads in my office and I know where everything is, which is highly, highly unlikely. Um, now they have that record of that call to remind them, oh yeah, that's right, I, I made that phone call. Uh, so this is another piece, and then, then again, it completes that circle that I shared with you earlier, and that's the thing that Ray really made crystal clear for me. It's that last piece that you're trying to archive. Um, this is the last uh, sort of slide I want to share with you, but in regards to handwriting and the benefits of handwriting notes. Um, so um, I'm an analog baby like some of you in this room. Um, digital babies were born with keyboards in their cribs, right? They know what a QWERTY board is from the time they, before they can even speak. Um, so in regards to that, they all believe that that's the best way to capture notes, to do work, etc. They're convinced of this. But in terms of social acceptability, if you are in front of, of a uh, client and you have um, your laptop opened, um, that's the equivalent to folding your arms and, and sort of, you know, not even really closing them off. You know, I don't know what you're doing behind there. You might be doing email. You might be looking at websites. I don't know what's going on. And you're, you're, you know, you seem to be taking notes, but you could be doing anything right now. I'm not sure. So it's more socially acceptable, for, you know, for a legal pad to be used. That's why legal pads, I would, I believe, are uh, so widely used in the law in the law community. Um, so being able to, you know, to really uh, address that. And and now the person you're speaking with, the client you're speaking with, um, really feels like you're listening, carefully listening, because you're writing down the notes that that they have to say. And then also, um, a digital paper, unlike a, a, no, a, a PC or a notebook, it enables for graphic expression. So you can really create symbols and, and, and wild um, notes. So some people are visual note takers, and they have a way of, of creating visual notes. And those visual notes, you cannot do with a PC, you cannot do with a laptop, but of course you can do those with digital paper. And this last piece basically is intuitive for every one of us. Um, it really does improve comprehension when you're handwriting notes. Uh, the reason why is because we generally can um, produce more words on a keyboard than we can with uh, handwriting. Um, but there's actually studies and data that prove this beyond intuition. And that basically um, talks about the, uh, the, the relationship between uh, actually handwriting and the things that happen in our brain as little children when we're first learning how to write um, because it's so difficult for them to form those letters carefully. You, you've all seen it. You know, you're trying to make a C when you're when a little child's trying to make a C, it's hard, and they work hard, and they work hard. And they've done brain scans on children who use a keyboard uh, or who use a template to form the letter, and then finally who actually free-form the letter. And that free-forming actually creates more brain activity. Anyway, for the rest of our lives, when we're using, when we're actually handwriting, that same brain activity is occurring, and it helps with comprehension. The other thing, too, is because we have less word count capability with handwriting, basically, what are we doing? We're listening to what you're saying, we're considering what you're saying, we're comprehending what you're saying, and then we're writing down a note of what it was. So that whole thing, when you go back to those handwritten notes, you like, you're like, oh yes, I remember what I was thinking then. As opposed to, if you're in a deposition, for example, uh, there's usually two people in a deposition. There's a lawyer and a stenographer. The lawyer typically would have a legal pad, and that's because they're listening, they're carefully you know, constructing what, what's going on here, and then they're writing notes to themselves. What is the stenographer doing? He's actually typing and capturing every single word. And I've, I've met many lawyers who have asked, you know, have you ever asked um, the stenographer what they heard during the, during the deposition? And some of them have said, yeah. And I, and I said, what do they say? 
they say they have no idea what happened in the, in the room at all. Because all they're doing, they're a vessel and they're capturing every word and they're not, you know, carefully listening and comprehending. So, um, one, leave you with one final thought in regards to this before I turn it back over to Ray. I think too many professionals um, right now are trying to adapt uh, their work habits to the devices that are available or the, uh, the device of the day. Um, so we all know what those devices of the day are and or the devices that are available. Instead of the other way around, I think um, di basically devices should be able to enhance the work habits that we've always used as opposed to us trying to conform to, their, to, the, to the way things are done that way. So these are just um, things to consider, um, thoughts there. The digital paper has been highly uh, received in regards to, uh, to the marketplace. Um, Sony is keenly interested in this device because of the fact that there's been such a great uh, appreciation for it. Um, Ray and I constantly are amazed at how many people really love the device and what it can do and what it represents. So um, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ray, um, who's going to just close up real quick. Great, thanks, Bill. All right. I know even more. I set that up. I set that 33 up. minutes, almost as promised, okay? Um, so well, thanks a lot guys. Hopefully you leave uh, the show um, and you have something that you can say, hey, I saw a wow. Uh, left Delta, a lot of good sessions, I got educated, but I saw something that was really cool. I like to think of this too as a first version device. I mean, it's three months off the press. Yeah? A couple questions if you don't mind. Our firm, we don't use World Docs, I'm sorry. Uh, but we use interwoven file site. Could, could this be Absolutely. So 90% um, uh, you would buy it from me. Um, so you'd be a customer kind of. Um, but 90% of our sales probably are not Rodox customers. We don't own everything. Uh, we'd like to someday. Um, so I want to help Sony get this out to the market because it's a great device. Um, so through a syncing process, uh, it will sync to your servers or workstation locations. And your IT guys would figure out how on file site you would point and pull it into your matter folder. That's kind of what we do with World Docs, probably a little bit tighter integration, but absolutely, uh, I want, um, I think Quinn Emanuel, which is a pretty large iManage uh, customer, um, they bought a handful of these too, and they have file site. So they'll find it ready. And then working standalone, you can, you can set up folders and you can manually save documents to the device? Yes, standalone, so you drag, Wirelessly works good, but like anything else, um, when I take um, uh, megabytes worth of my World Docs manuals, for example, just as a test, uh, it took a while to sync. So if you have an entire case file like this litigator I talked to, um, he plugged it in USB, it shows up as a flash drive, and he drug it over there a few seconds later, just like a, a plug in a flash drive in. So it works. And then you can save it to your, to your uh, 32 gig. You uh, unlimited documents if you put a little flash card in there, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we we have um, a, um, I brought a dozen or so here. We have a special um, that we're not selling them at the booth. We can't do that, but we are, we have them in the suite. Uh, I think for $8.99, we're having an Oats special. Uh, we have a few less left. Um, the price is $1,100. Um, we feel that, um, I'll give you two statements here. Um, for what it does uh, after you use this device, nothing else will replace this device, so it's worth, it's worth the money. Um, I feel to get it more spread within the legal market, and I'm going to continue to push Sony to try to um, soften that cost a little bit so that we can more broad spread it. I think that needs to happen. But I think after you have a few, your partners have a few, um, it, it will see within your firm. So definitely stop by and get our contact information and we'll help you get started there. Well, you could adjust price, you could do volume reductions for... Yeah, so yes, absolutely. You're, you have a couple that have it, um, and I love the uh, customer that came by that's uh, buying them for the Seattle firm I have that is going to use them, not as a personal device, but use them to put performance on the stuff for attorneys review they can check out. That spreads the cost a little bit over um, not just my device. Once you start taking notes on this though, and your notes are saved up in the cloud and or in World Docs, a lot of my notes are confidential. I do not save my notes in World Docs, even though I, I have it on my desktop every day. It goes into my private cloud account because my administrators kind of can get into my World Docs. Um, so for you too, once you start saving that on there and being able to switch back and forth between here's my Ilton notes, here's my daily log, here's the customers I talk to, I, it's, it's fantastic. So, uh, go ahead. 
digital voice recorders and uh, we do use um, voice voice recognition software because it's it's at 99.2 percent dragon for example uh, so we'll incorporate that OCR just isn't there yet so we don't feel we want to create a, a customer experience that's just not that positive okay so the indexing when you can search does that come from printed printed documents okay so like, okay so like I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry typed documents so pre, yeah pre-indexed yeah and we can have just FY on the dev side um, we have um, Nuance and Abby in-house um, to do some OCR crawling type technology. And I've had my developers, since we've gotten this device um, for months, trying to interpret my notes uh, with both Abby and, um, um, and Nuance um, working with their corporate development. And it ain't happening anytime soon, um, maybe short of uh, you know, Watson or something like that, massive power. Uh, when I talk to the companies who do this for like an Evernote or there's other uh, iPad devices, I talked to a CEO the other day to see if I could license this technology. And what it is, they design it within the device themselves so they can actually convert it as you're type doing the keystrokes uh, so they can understand it. So I am going to talk to Sony about uh, the next version, versions if they can perhaps look at building some of that in. We're asked by judge advocates and such a lot by uh, to get that technology. Well, well for the legal industry, I just use like my opinion, for legal industry that would be huge because especially if you're trying to go paperless, like, which our firm is trying to do. The OCR capabilities to be able to searching is, I mean, yeah, I mean, just the whole concept. That's why they want to do it right first. Right. Well, no, of course. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's we're we're, we're continuing. If when that becomes possible yeah. in any way, we will have that in there. It would be like if you took my notes right now on paper and scanned it in with the PDF. You're going to have that same. You know, try to find something that interprets it. So we're working on that. But thank you so much for your feedback because it really does help a lot. So that's a tremendous product. It's, it's, I just got my hands on it. I used it. So, Paula, uh, you've had it for 24 hours. I'm yes. so excited that after I absolutely love we, we never sell anything at shows. You don't sell stuff at Delta, but it's really cool. What do you think in 24 hours? I, I just love it. It's, it's, it just meets my needs so much for not only reviewing documents, but uh, taking notes. And, you know, as a consultant, I can go into a law firm and take my notes, and guess what? They're all going to want one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope so. I, I agree. So, uh, but do they, they, they convert documents to uh, an uh, image format? You don't need to pull in a Word document to mark it up on their PDF. Yep. Yeah, so PDF. Everything, everything that is um, produced on here is a PDF document, and everything that is imported into here must be a PDF document. But that's a very standard uh, practice for a lot of yours. So. And with your autonomy, too, um, we have a thing in World Docs where you can take non-PDF documents and right-click and it converts it on the fly to PDF there. With autonomy, you could have a tool like DocScorp or something to do a similar thing okay. to get them on there. You, got to, you did say you, to load it into this, it's got to be PDF. Yes, yes. Okay. currently. In the back there? Security on the device itself? Yeah, there's a, it's just like, your, just like your smartphone. There's a PIN code that you can enter, and, and that'll be, uh, that's basically what'll happen is you, you, you have the access uh, capability with that PIN code. No encryption at rest at this time. So, so uh, if I can speak to it? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so basically, the beauty of digital devices, and this is what's wonderful, is it's like a fine wine. It improves with age, uh, and it's because of the beauty of a firmware update. So what will happen, and there's already a huge, um, I don't even know all the firmware updates that are on the horizon, but there's so many on the horizon already um, to keep on improving that. And then you'll get notification uh, right, on the, right on the device once you hook up with Wi-Fi that there's, a, you know, that there's an improvement available, and then you'll be able to refresh. So that's... That's what I, I think is amazing. I'm, again, I'm an analog baby. I remember when you bought a device, an analog device, and you're like, oh, man, I know next year it's going to be better, faster, quicker, you know, more beautiful. But now that's kind of gone away. We really, we're all conditioned for that firmware update experience. One more comment. Maybe either, maybe go on left or right hand. Um, a great question. So uh, it can be oriented for left or right. And then if you, I don't know what you call that, but that weird way that it works. <laughs> very, very configurable. That one there, it can be well, oriented. I'm noticing it's, it's on the right side that you put the pin in. Oh, thank you. Thank you. For that. Thank you for that. So configured for the line. Thank you. 
Ah, the lefty versus righty. Yeah, that'll, uh, that'll, it's, uh, it's exciting. That old war. Okay, so you're thinking at the top? So, <coughs> but which way would it come out? <laughs> yeah. When we started, so we, we were very cautious. Uh, World Docs has been a pretty standalone company. We make a really good DMS product. Uh, we partner with a lot of companies for integrations and stuff, but uh, very few companies I want in my booth um, or I want to um, share a speaking space with. Um, <clears throat> I want to know that they're committed. Um, so these folks actually um, are getting me in front of um, their management in Tokyo that actually designed this device to get the feedback I have thus far gotten in the legal market. So I'm really excited. Um, I know that some of the first months of, of stuff is already going to be in a uh, firmer release that I've asked for, uh, for deletion and better categorization and stuff. So that's kind of exciting. I, version one, I think it's going to get sweeter and sweeter uh, as time goes on. But that, that's just a testimonial to the, to the relationship we have with World Docs and with Ray. Um, you know, we think so much of him and his partnership, and honestly speaking, in my personal and professional experience, um, I've never really had a partner like him. He's just wonderful. I can even hear him talking about that World Docs, that, you know, that's his goal, that's his objective. But this can be a standalone device, and that's just a remarkable thing for him to, to admit and say, and, and he knows what that will do. It just helps, you know, people will just say, hey, those World Docs guys, they're great, um, and we know they're great. And so we've invited them over to Tokyo for that reason. Yes? Um, I noticed in the user interface there are a few references to files and database. <coughs> when it says database, is that like the World Docs database? World Docs or database or autonomy open text. If you, I can try to figure out how to show you how to get them in them too. Um, I'm not going to write it for self-serving reasons, but yeah, that means that database, your document craft repository. We have a lot of um, uh, some uh, educational, um, you know, Cambridge University, and I can name all kinds of clients um, actually that have bought these, and they don't have any DMS, but they're just going to use their box type, you know, file cloud service to store it. So, if you don't mind, we'd love uh, those of you who haven't had a chance to play with it or who want to play with it, so that and we can you can continue asking questions that way in the morning. And or come by the booth. And so um, we can set up like uh, when you go in the back there. Where do you want to yeah, yeah. And so, party at 5 o'clock in our suite, 6030, Delta 6030. If you guys, I know you have about a million parties, but I'll buy you a beer if anybody comes by. <laughs> Thank you very much.